3.1. No, it is 4. Sorry, that's a mistake. So it is oh. 4.1. Okay. We just finished chapter 3. 4.1 constant and linear functions. Um, this chapter is long. We go till, like I said earlier, the uh, first week after the Christmas break. That's when you're, actually you can see your next test is not until January 17th. Sorry, that's a situational problem. So about a week before that will be your next test. I haven't posted it yet. So it's, it's a long chapter. There's a lot of stuff here. It's the mo by far the most important chapter of the year. This is the biggest chapter in terms of how much it's worth in terms of the content on the mid-year exam, in terms of the content on the final exam, by far the biggest, biggest chapter. I wouldn't say it's the hardest, because again, they're sort of all relatively the same. Um, I think a lot of people tend to do fairly well in this chapter, as long as you stay on top of it. Uh, if you don't, you fall behind, then again, as always, it falls apart. Um, this first lesson is complete review. There should be absolutely nothing new in this lesson, because technically this is a grade nine review. But we're going to need this so we can continue with the rest of the chapter. So constant and linear functions. A constant function shows no change. Constant function shows no change. Now, in our last chapter, we talked about functions already, but our focus in our last chapter by far was just kind of looking at graphs and reading graphs, making sure we understand what we're seeing. Here, yes, we are going to be looking at graphs, but not as much as maybe working with other things. So last chapter, I said, mm, you know what? The word function might cause us some problems. But last chapter, I said, eh, anytime you see the word function, just pretend you're looking at a graph. Pretend the word function means graph. <laughs> Same thing happens here, but actually, the word function is going to mean a little bit more for us here. The word function, yeah, we could relate this to a graph for sure. We could relate it to a rule as well. If you're not sure what a rule is, I'll put the word equation. Which we've definitely worked with in the past. But you can also refer to a table of values as well. Now, all three things here we have talked about already this year. So at least we know we know what a graph is in Cartesian plane of the whole deal. We know what a rule is, y is equal to blah, blah, blah. We know what a table of values is, this little chart. So what we're talking about today, we're going to be two, doing two things, a constant linear function. We'll first start talking about the constant function, and we'll see what each one of these things look like for a constant function, and then we'll look at a linear function after that. So for a constant function, let's look at what the table will look like. So table, we'll look at the graph. Table graph and rule. Table graph and rule, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of tables of graphs and rules, really all chapter. In fact, it's entire chapter is just tables of graphs and rules and tables of graphs and rules. And it's kind of looking for patterns, uh, looking for um, you know, how things are related. So first things first, if I have a little table here, and in this table, let's just say uh, we've got, uh, in this column, this is, I don't know, time. And this is cost. And under time, I'm going to put numbers like 0, 1, 2, 3. And for cost, let's just keep it simple. Let's put $10, put 15, 20, and 25. This could represent something. Maybe it's, I don't know, the, uh, the cost to rent a bicycle, depending on the number of hours you rent it for, the number of days, pardon me, you rent it for. Maybe that's what it represents. Yeah? This is like irrelevant, but like sometimes, because like I grew up like French, I mistakenly put the like uh, The dollar sign? Yeah. No problem, put on the other side. No problem. Okay. So I won't lose marks. Absolutely that. not. Never, never, never. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. I just realized I, I just showed a linear function. We have to erase these ones. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. So it's not 10, 15, 20, 25. <laughs> Okay, 
So this is in a situation that talks about the table of values, and we hopefully we can see that a little bit good. They're okay. all asking for whiteouts. Oh, you're looking for whiteouts? I have some on my desk. Don't you? Sorry about that mistake. So very clearly here we can see that there's no changes here. Now the problem is, I didn't really tell you what's acting like your x variable and what's acting like your y variable. Back in grade 9 you talked about x as being your independent variable and time as being your dependent variable. Which one's which here? Which one's x and which one's y? Mm -hmm. Right. Say it. X and y. So x you're saying is time and y is cost? Yeah. Y. Okay, Sadie's answer is the perfect answer. Now, in grade nine, you were told, which is right, you were told that, okay, in this case, the cost depends on the time. The more you rent it, then maybe the cost would or wouldn't change. In this case, it's not changing. But the easiest answer is, uh, this is x, and this is y. Why? Because uh, that appears first. Done. All chapter long, for the rest of your lives, if you see a table of values, the first column is going to be your x. Don't even think about it. You can literally just put a little x on top. First column, always x. Second column, always y. In case, because you will, in case you see a table of values written horizontally, going side to side, take a guess as to which one would be your x and which one would be your y. If, you had a table, if I take this table of values and just kind of, not rotate it, but change it so it's going this way to save some space, which one would be your X and which one would be your Y? X on the bottom. Well, I know. X on the top. X on the top. What? Well, the X comes first. It's like, you know, it's like, let's say it's like folding, right? Like a structure. And it's like falls over. No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not literally kind of rotating this. I'm just kind of rephrasing or reshaping how I'm going to uh, show my table of values. Uh, X comes before Y in the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, X comes before Y, so X is first. So if you see a table of values going this way, don't even think about it. The first thing is always going to be your X. And the second thing is your y. If you see a table of values going this way, don't even think about it. First thing is your x, second thing is your y. What we notice here, what's the dead giveaway that this is a constant function? It shows no change. The y values clearly are not changing. These things, uh, y's not changing. That's really obvious. The y values aren't changing, then it's constant. In fact, last, our last chapter we talked about, remember when it's flat? When it's flat, it's constant because it's not going up or not going down. So in this case, we can very clearly see that it's not changing at all. In a graph, we already kind of talked about this last lesson, or last uh, class anyway, or pardon me, last chapter. If you had a graph, how could you tell if this was a constant function? <coughs> We've already talked about this. Yeah, just a flat line, right? So if you have anything that's flat, then it's constant. So I'm just going to write the word flat. Really straightforward for a constant function. In a table, all the y's end up being the same. As soon as there's a change, it's not a function anymore. It's not a constant function anymore. In a graph, no problem, as long as it's flat. It doesn't make a difference where it's flat, higher, lower, whatever. If it's flat, it's flat, it's constant. Really obvious. And just to remember, because sometimes we do make some silly mistakes, x-axis and this is your y-axis. If it's not written there, it's always implied. The rule, however, The rule for anything is always going to be written in the form of y equals. And it's the next part on the rest of this part on the right side that's going to change as we continue through this chapter. Some of these are going to get it weirder than others for sure, but we're starting off easy. We're starting off simple. If I look at this table, or even maybe the graph, maybe you could even give me an example. The y value here is 10. The y value here is 10. Y value here is 10. The Y value here is 10. The Y value is always 10. So the rule is Y is equal to 10. There's no X's. A constant function, there are no X's at all. It's just a number. So Y is equal to a number is going to be the rule of any constant function. If it's 10, if it's 15, it's higher. If it's negative 3, it's lower. There are absolutely no x's here because x doesn't change anything. If I put an x in, well, I can't even put it in. I can't even like, put an x in to multiply or do anything. Now, that's one way of writing the rule 
another way of writing the rule, which is going to be much more common now in this chapter, is instead of saying y, we can say f of x using function notation. I'll get back to this in a second. <coughs> I want to make sure we know how to read this. This is read as f <coughs> of x, not f at x. It's not f times x. It's a name. The reason why we use the f is for the word function, so function of x. And if you see function of x, honestly, the, I think most people will just cross it off and write a y, or white it out or write a y, or erase it and write a y. But this f of x notation, this function notation, we're going to see more and more. But we notice still, it, there's no x is in here. That's the whole point of a constant function. We'll do one example, then we'll move on. Carter? What's the point of putting like, like a function in x is equal to x? I'm going to... It's harder to show this with a constant function, so I'm going to have to wait till I do a linear function, and I'll show you why. What the, like the whole point of writing it that way. It's actually useful, but we're not. Uh, I can't show it to you yet, so I'll show it to you a little bit later. So let's do one example. This will be pretty quick. Uh, the cost. Buy a tub of ice cream six bucks. What? Nothing. Okay. Um, let's just ask a simple question. Um, what would be the cost? Of ice cream six bucks, what would be the cost after three days? Thanks for taking This is a perfect example of a constant function because when you look at this, it doesn't even make any sense. Cost after three days? Hmm? Six. It's six bucks. Why would the cost of a tub of ice cream change just because you bought it a couple days? <laughs> but, sir, but, sir, it was on sale, it was on sale. No, no, that's what I'm talking about. Just in general, even if you wait a little bit, it's still going to be the same price. So in this case, the x is acting as your days, or the number of days. The y is acting as your cost, in dollars, I guess. And our answer, the cost itself, would be six days, or six dollars. Because that has nothing to do with days. Yeah? Um, for this chapter, are we going to have to write like, what our x is? Um, yeah, half the time is going to be given to you already. The other half, then, yeah, we have to talk about what it is, for sure. I'd say even more than half. More than half the time is going to be given to us. Well, like, we're going to have to write it on the, like, on yeah. the test or whatever? Yeah. yeah, just that we did in that previous chapter. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that's it. There's an example of a constant function. It does not change. You don't do 6 times 3 and it's $18 all of a sudden because you buy it 3 days later. That's not it at all. It's always going to be the same, same, same. Let's do linear. Nothing so far should be new. All of this should be pretty good. A linear function shows adding or subtracting pattern for the y value. function shows an adding or subtracting pattern for the y values. Look, if I'm honest, that's not a great mathematical way of explaining this, but it does make a lot of sense, especially when we start looking at some examples. I think in my notes, I probably didn't even have that written. I might even have this written as, oh, I did. I used to teach this by saying linear function shows an arithmetic pattern. Then we have to talk about what the word arithmetic means and all that, so let's forget about that. Shows an adding subtracting pattern. What we'll do, we'll do the exact same thing. We'll look at the, what the table looks like, the graph and the rule. We'll do an example, and then we'll be done. So 
table, round. Again, we're going to do tables and graphs and rules all chapter for a variety of different functions, different rules, different graphs, different patterns, different questions. If I look for a table here, and again, if I just use my same exact time and cost, and if I do 0, 1, 2, 3, if I do the same thing with $10, 15, 20, 25, the mistake I made in the last one, you can put dollar signs if you want, but it doesn't really change anything. Remember, the first column is your X. So without even thinking, we know that this is going to be your X and the next one is going to be your Y. And what we notice in the Y values is exactly what I have written. We can see that we're having some type of pattern, and that pattern is you're adding or subtracting the same number every single time. And hopefully, we can see that right here. Here, if I look at the y values, I don't care about the x values right now. I'll just look at the y values. We can clearly see we're adding five every single time. So we're adding five every time. The fact that we're adding five every time that shows you the adding and/or subtracting pattern. We could have been subtracting a number every single time, but as long as that number stays the same, then this would be an example of a linear function. So in the table, we can see patterns. If they're all the same, it's constant. If you can see that adding or subtracting, it's going to be linear. There's nothing else that looks like that. In a graph, we've already really talked about this. We kind of did a chapter on this already. How would you describe a linear function if you look at it? Really quick. Yeah. For the table, if you if it's not a repetitive pattern, mm -hmm. is it still considered a linear function? Possibly. <coughs> Things get worse and a little bit harder. We'll get to that eventually for sure. Okay. But if I had these numbers of the x's were going up by the same amount, then these would have to absolutely have to be going up or down by the same amount. And if that wasn't a pattern, then this would not be linear, it'd be something completely different. Okay. So yeah, as soon as you see that pattern, it's a dead giveaway. The graph, any idea what the graph of any linear function would look like? Uh, How would you describe this? You're kind of doing that, Carrie? Just and you're not constant, you can't use the word constant, right? Straight line. Straight line? No. Because that's a straight line, but that's constant. That's, it's an increasing diagonal line. There we go. It's not the increasing part, it's but the it's diagonal. Like increasing. The diagonal wow. that makes sense. Okay, hold on. Let me just draw an example of one. Here's an example of one. Now, in this example, sure, it's going up. Absolutely. You can see the numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, for sure. But it doesn't have to be increasing. It could be decreasing. If I made the numbers going down, it would be decreasing. But what it definitely is, is it's definitely a diagonal line. That's the dead giveaway. As long as you have a diagonal straight line, then it's going to be a linear function. It can't be flat because that's constant. And Faith said straight. Nope. It could be up and down. If, if I drew a straight line like directly up and down, that is a straight line, but it's actually not considered linear. So linear has to be diagonal. Whether it's really steep or not, or really sort of flat-ish, that's fine, but it's gotta be a straight line. If ever you're not sure linear, you can literally see the word in it. Look at the word linear, it has a word in it. Please don't look at the word ear. The word line, it has a line in it. A rule. This is also pretty straightforward. Because we've talked about this already. Ooh, I don't know why I just drew a line. The rule for a linear function, if I give you an example of this one, would be y is equal to 5x plus 10. That would be the rule of a linear function. If we wanted to write it using function notation, remember that whole f of x business I was talking about earlier? Sure, we could write it like that. It would be f of x equals 5x plus 10. But all of a sudden, when you write it that way, f of x equals 5x plus 10, our brain starts to hurt a little bit. Because it just doesn't look good. This f of x business makes it look worse. So anytime in this chapter, if you see f of x, and you don't want to work with it, erase it, literally <coughs> scratch it off, white it out, and just write the letter y, because it means exactly the same thing. And for most of us, that's going to be much easier to do the process. But in general, this is a very specific, specific example. But in general, what we know is for a linear function, it's our good old y is equal to ax plus b. That's really what we're talking about today.
And we, we've already had this conversation about why is the air supposed to be. So let's just quickly recap that. We'll do our last example and that'll be it. Yeah. There's nothing new in this in this chapter at all. Absolutely nothing. Why are we learning this chapter? So that we can tie this in for the rest of it. If I just if I just started cold with the next lesson, you'd be like, where did this come from all of a sudden? Oh, so chapter four is just like an add-on. Chapter four is is a little bit more than an add-on. It's the biggest part of the year. So I'm I'm using some information that we've already seen so that we don't get completely surprised uh, in the next lesson. Okay, so let's do an example and we'll tidy this up there. The height of a rocket. The height of a rocket is determined using a linear function shown in the table below. What's the height of 10 seconds? You would have done this question in grade 9. You, put up, you probably would have done variations of something like this for about a month in grade 9. We haven't done this type of question this year. We've done all the pieces to it, but we actually haven't done this type of question as a word problem. Think back to that first chapter. Sure, we did chart problems, but it was a different type of chart problem. You had much more information in your chart than what we have here. Very clearly, this is absolutely a linear function because we see the word linear function right there. You don't have to worry about that. And obviously, it's not constant because the numbers are changing. Now, the tricky thing is here, over there, I said for a table, what you notice is the pattern of numbers is going bigger or smaller by the same amount but you just don't have enough information in the table to figure out that pattern. But I am flat out telling you it's a linear function. So if it's a linear function, we should be able to do this. The kicker is trying to remember how. Remember I said that this is your x and this is your y? So if that's your x and that's your y, we eventually want to get a rule y is equal to ax plus b. ax plus b. ax plus b. And then you just have to find your a. Perfect. Remember how to do that? Yeah, y2 minus y1 Perfect. over x2. Y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This is the probably the single most forgotten formula this year. Anyone remember the y1 formula? Y1 minus y1 minus y1. All right, maybe we won't forget it. So we've done this already. We just didn't do this with a word problem. If we're going to use x's and y's and we look at our table, these are your x's and those are your y's. Okay, so here's your first x that you see. Here's the second x that you see. Here's the first y we see. Here's the second y we see. We're back to good old formulas. Which some of us have missed using our calculators for the last three weeks. Yeah. For sure? Yeah? Okay. But well, we're back into it. Now. Let's put all these pieces in. Y2 minus Y1 or X minus X1. We've done this a lot, but we haven't done it for maybe a month. So maybe we forgot a little bit, so let's do all the pieces. 110 minus 50 over X2 minus X1 is 7 minus 3. Punch it all in, calculate it all, do it in steps, do it in one shot, whatever you want. And I think you get 15. Y1 
y1 minus ax1 would be 30 minus the a, which is 15, times x1, which is 3. Sorry, 50. 50 minus 15 times 3. You type all that in. You get 5. Again, because we've talked about this quite a bit already this year, then we don't really have to spend too much time on it. So now we have a rule. This is absolutely wrong. Excellent. Maybe we're still making some mistakes like that. Yeah, don't forget to the X. Now, this question didn't even say to do this. I don't even know why we just did this. Maybe you do. What was the point of doing this? Find the height. So it's 15 times 10. Yeah. Nowhere in this question does it actually say talk about the rule, but we need to use the rule so we can figure out the height of 10 seconds. Because now that we have a rule, the 10 seconds is your x. Remember, time is your x in here. So this 10 seconds is an x value. Let's put the 10 right in there, and we can find the height. Because I'm running a space, I don't want to squeeze it in. I'll do it over here. So at 10 seconds, I've got y is equal to 15 times 10 plus 5, which gives me an answer of 155. That's your final answer. Which is, again, grade 9. It's not even grade 10. But we're going to need this to build on to it to talk about the rest of the chapter. I'm going to go back and answer Carter's question. If anyone remembers Carter's question. What was the point of the f of x business? Okay, all the work here is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Most of you would, would do this. But I didn't have to write my rule as y is equal to blah, blah, blah. I could have written my rule as f of x is equal to 15x plus 5. Because it's exactly the same thing. But earlier I mentioned, you know what, you can just erase the f of x and write a y. But let's go back and talk about the whole point of writing this. Because you're going to see this a ton in this chapter. And some of you actually might find it useful. Pardon? Why did you just put like f of x? Uh, f of x? Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, uh, one Say it again? Instead of, like, instead of putting like 15x plus 5. Because I haven't done the work yet. I'm just, oh. yeah, pretend I, I just figured out that step and I want to continue and write it this way. Okay. okay. So what I would do if I write it this way, which you don't have to do at all, but Carter asked the question, so I'll, I'll answer it, is, the x that we're putting in is the 10 seconds. So I put 10 seconds in for the x, and I put it in right there. And I'm not multiplying, this is just kind of a name, f of 10. And I find f of 10 is equal to 155. I get the same answer. So why? Why even bother? Does anyone see it? Simplifying. Why bother even doing this if I could just do this? No. That's okay. Okay, don't do this in your notes, just take a look. Maybe you see it now. Maybe you see it now. Anyone see what the point of it was? Oh yeah, it's the y No. There it is. Because of writing in a different way, this, if you write this, all you get is a y value, which is fine. That was the answer. There's nothing wrong with it. But the benefit of writing this is that you see the y value, but you can also see the x value at the same time. Because remember last chapter we said, yeah, by the way, this is a coordinate point where the x is 10 and the y is 155. That's the only benefit, is you can have a little bit more information by writing that way. But it's your call. Does that make sense, Carter? If not, just erase and write a y. Yeah. That's it. Can you hit stop, please?